Let's talk about carbon capture. This is a very important part of the equation that we need to solve in order to pull our climate back to a state of relative stability and make sure that we don't inevitably drive ourselves to an early extinction. Transitioning to sustainable energy is by far the most important and most urgent problem that needs to be solved. But even if we accomplish that, then the fact remains that we've spent more than a century removing carbon from under the ground that's been down there for hundreds of millions of years, and we've been releasing it into the atmosphere and the oceans. We have changed the chemical composition of our world in a drastic and unnatural fashion. So we need to fix that. We need to get all that excess carbon back out of the air and sea and put it back where it belongs, under the ground, or use it to build new things. Carbon capture is something that Elon Musk is very passionate about. Obviously, he's very heavily invested in sustainable energy and climate change with Tesla. But he's also very conscious of the fact that his space exploration company releases vast amounts of new carbon every time they launch a rocket. So he wants to fund new technology and new innovations to start dealing with that. He's also heavily invested in colonizing Mars, where you might be surprised to learn that carbon capture also has a major role to play. So, let's get into it. So I think we're all pretty familiar by now with the concept of human-driven climate change. That's the result of our activity disrupting the natural carbon cycle. There is supposed to be carbon in our environment. It's a good and necessary element. There is a natural cycle of carbon production and carbon absorption. Plants convert CO2 into oxygen for animals to breathe. It's a beautiful process. We just screwed it up by extracting extra carbon from under the ground where it has been contained for millions of years. This was not part of the natural cycle. We added it, and it's now much more excess than can be absorbed by the ecosystem. This marks a drastic increase. We can use geology to measure the amount of carbon in the atmosphere over a long period of Earth's history. We can take core samples from a place like Antarctica where there has never been any direct human influence. We know that for hundreds and thousands of years, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere was sitting right around 280 parts per million. In the year 1800, that started to increase at an unusual rate to 300 because we started chopping down forests en masse to burn them and we were mass murdering whales to extract their oil and burn that. And then around the year 1900, the chart basically goes vertical. We figure out how to extract and burn fossil fuels and that's gotten us up to about 400 parts per million of CO2 by the present day. We currently release about 45 billion tons of CO2 every year. As a society, we talk a lot about transitioning to renewable and sustainable energy and reducing our carbon footprint. But in reality, our carbon production only continues to accelerate. And now we're kind of just sitting around and waiting to see what kind of effect that is going to have on our planet, our climate, and our society. This is what Elon Musk calls the dumbest experiment in history ever. So that's why carbon capture is important. It is not enough to just slow down carbon production. It's not enough to go net zero. We need to actively pull back the damage. We need to go net negative if we're truly going to make it. If we can figure out sustainable energy and negate our carbon footprint at the same time, then there's really no reason to think that we can't keep things going here on Earth for another billion years. As long as we can resist the baffling temptation to murder each other and no asteroids destroy us. And that's why Elon is putting up $100 million to incentivize carbon capture research and development. This is a project that he launched in 2021 with an organization called XPRIZE. They'll typically run competitions with cash prizes to simulate innovation in green energy and future tech. But this is by far the largest prize that they've ever been able to offer thanks to 
the richest person on the planet. Elon says that his goal is to spur ideas about the long-term need for carbon capture. This is a preposterously difficult thing to figure out, and everyone is well aware that it will take a long time to find the right solution. But we have to start that process now as hard as it may be. So the goal with XPRIZE is to have teams of scientists and engineers build functional carbon capture prototypes. This isn't a design contest, it can't just work on paper. They need a functioning system that can actively extract carbon from the air at a rate of one kiloton per year, which is a thousand tons. The winning team will receive $50 million to work on scaling that prototype up to the gigaton level. As Elon Musk always says, building a prototype is relatively easy, but scaling up to volume is incredibly difficult. The other 50 million is going to be distributed between three runners up to help them along as well. Because this is not the kind of thing that can be built overnight, the contest duration is over four years. So we won't see these results or know the winner until 2025. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. So how does carbon capture actually work? Well, at the moment, the predominant technology is called direct air capture, or DAC. This is basically like sticking a giant air purifier into the atmosphere. A humongous array of fans pull in air and force it through a filter that traps the carbon and spits out cleaner air on the other side. Then the trapped carbon is deposited back under the ground. The first and pretty much the only large scale DAC plant in the world is in Iceland. It's called Orca and is operated by a company called Climeworks. Orca was launched in September, 2021. There are eight collectors at the plant that capture 500 tons annually. So four kilotons per year in total. Apparently it's the equivalent of about 40 million trees. That's another thing that people will often try and interject with. Just plant trees. And yeah, trees capture carbon, but it's a slow process. Like if your house is burning down, you could try spraying it with a garden hose and that might help a little bit, but what you really need is a fire truck. Trees are the garden hose, carbon capture is the fire truck, and our house is burning down. The only problem right now is that we haven't figured out how to make DAC energy efficient enough to really be very effective. It takes a massive amount of electricity to power these capture plants. If you want to run a large scale DAC from renewable energy alone, you would need a windmill farm the size of a major city. Just a few solar panels won't cut it. But something that modern science and engineering is very good at is making things more efficient. Look at computers and cell phones. Look at electric vehicle range. We can do this. We can also do carbon capture in the ocean through more natural processes. There are some really cool ideas right now about breeding vast populations of algae in the open ocean that would pull carbon out of the water and the air. Similar things can be done with sea plants. A lot of the carbon that we release ends up in the ocean. So underwater vegetation can help to pull it out and convert it to oxygen. The area of the ocean is so vast that this can actually have a large cumulative effect. Okay. Let's get into some tinfoil hat stuff. So yes, Elon Musk obviously has an interest in saving the planet and reversing climate change. I mean, what's the point in being the richest, most successful person on the planet if the whole planet gets ruined, right? But it's also fair to say that Elon has ulterior motives in play. We know that Elon is eyeing up the planet Mars as an option B for humanity. This is mainly how he justifies launching rockets that burn carbon fuel and create the very problem that he's trying to solve on Earth. He feels that it is worthwhile because there is no other way to put a rocket into space 
and he needs to launch a gigantic starship rocket into space so that we can reach Mars and begin to colonize that planet to extend the light of consciousness to the stars and preserve humanity. As unlikely as it might be, as far as we know, we are the only advanced sentient species in the universe. And if we are, as sad as this fact may be, then human beings are the most special, most finite resource in all of existence. And that means that we have to do everything within our power to not only preserve what we are, but to grow humanity outwards across the universe. It's a heavy concept, but at the same time, pretty simple. It makes sense. So anyway, first step is going to Mars. We get there in a Starship rocket that is powered by a combination of oxygen and methane fuel. Mostly oxygen, Elon says that it's about 80% oxygen, 20% methane. But even a gigantic rocket like Starship can only carry enough fuel to get us to Mars and land on the surface. After that, it's spent. Can't get back up into space. You are stuck on Mars. Or are you? One of the main reasons that SpaceX chose methane as their rocket fuel for Starship is because we can source it on Mars, in situ resource collection. We can't just directly collect methane gas, it's not quite that easy, but methane is a chemical compound of hydrogen and carbon. So we just need to combine those two elements. We know that Mars has water ice, and water is a chemical compound of hydrogen and oxygen. We know that we can split that hydrogen and oxygen apart using electrolysis. We do that all the time here on Earth already. So now we have both hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is useful for obvious reasons, allowing us to breathe. And now to make methane, we just need to combine our hydrogen with carbon. The atmosphere on Mars is incredibly thin, but it does exist. And it just so happens to be 90% carbon dioxide. How could we possibly get that much needed element out of the Martian atmosphere? You guessed it, direct air carbon capture. So, is Elon Musk most interested in saving the planet or refueling his Mars rocket? If he can do both, then who the hell cares? It's a win-win situation. What do you think though? Is carbon capture actually possible at the gigaton scale or is this all just a massive pipe dream? Can we at least use it to colonize Mars? Drop your theories below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.